You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Last week, we celebrated the feast of the presentation of the Lord. Jesus, the light of the world, came to the temple. We also reflected on the effects of babies and grandbabies, how they are sparks of light and love in our lives. This week, we hear Jesus teaching, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. This spiritual teaching is so positive that we find it challenging. Our initial response is to protest. No, Jesus, I am a sinner. I am not as good as I would like to be. Jesus is quite insistent. We are something that we may not fully realize. We have potential that we have not actuated. We are a gift that we may not have fully developed. We have a further calling that we have not responded to. Jesus mixes this positive message with a warning. If we fail to become salt and light, we risk losing our zest or our light may go out. God intends for us to be the most valuable gift to the earth. But if we go undeveloped, we become of least value or our light may be shut off. Jesus wants to cut through our underestimation of ourselves. He wants to establish the truth in our minds and in our hearts. We are created to bring zest and meaning to the earth. Jesus sees this as a clear and obvious truth. It's as easily seen as a city on a mountain. What is so apparent to Jesus, we think of as an overestimation. Just look at us struggling to make it through the day. Just trying to make ends meet. Trying to maintain our fragile relationships. But this just reinforces Jesus' teaching. Salt, by itself, is worthless. You cannot eat it. It is only when salt is mixed lightly with food that its value is revealed. It brings out the taste and zest of a dish. We are called to bring taste and zest to life. As we engage the struggles of every day at home and at work, light brings illumination when things are dark. It helps us to see what is going on. As light, we are to help illumine the truth of things. When everything seems so difficult, we are called to bring light to the situation. What is the meaning of this? What is the truth? Let me give you an example the artist who made the front doors of our church, Harold Belays. I had the privilege of working with him on developing a couple of projects. Whenever I would speak with him, he always had big ideas. He thought creatively. He was always ready to try something new. Even in his old age, when he was crippled by arthritis, he did not let that stop him. He couldn't sculpt anymore, so he would say, let's try something new. When he died a few years ago, the earth became a less interesting place. It had lost some salt and had lost some light. Now, did everyone like his art? 
No, but he was salt and light to all he met. People who are light draw other people to light. A good professor, more than teaching a set of facts, ignites a passion and then focuses it into a steady light. It is in being salt and light in our daily life that the true divine source is revealed through us. Today we are celebrating the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. In calling this anointing a sacrament, we proclaim that even sickness is a moment of encountering holy mystery. That when we are sick, God can shine through us. Even when we lose our energy, God can bring zest and meaning to life. In the midst of suffering, we can be salt and light. Even in our weakness, the glory of the cross of Christ is revealed as wisdom. We pray for healing, but we also embrace being conformed to Christ. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world.